What is up YouTube? Welcome to Panfro Games and in today's video we're going to be going over the best guidelines to use in a Pokemon Legends Arceus Nuzlocke run. A Nuzlocke is a challenge run that essentially is you impose particular rules on yourself to have a different and more challenging experience with a game. These runs are pretty classic, they've been around since the very beginning with Red and Blue, but with Legends Arceus, since the game is so different, it is a little bit harder to run a Nuzlocke just because the fundamental rules of Pokemon are a lot different here in the game. And I do recommend creating a second profile on your Switch so you don't have to overwrite your save. And I think this will be great for someone who just wants more time with their game and doesn't want to buy something else or play something else. And if you're just tired of, you know, shiny hunting or you've already completed your decks, this is another fun thing that you can do in the game. Because this is a Nuzlocke run, we're going to be following the two most basic rules of a Nuzlocke. The usual, if your Pokemon faints, you're going to have to throw it away. And every Pokemon you get, you're going to have to nickname. So the Nuzlocke here begins the moment we can actually fully explore the open world area. And as you can see, we have the open world up now. And we are still doing some tutorial stuff, but this is still good enough to actually start catching our Pokemon. So when you do some of the tutorial, you actually have caught the Bidoof. Starly and Shinx here for the Nuzlocke here. We're actually gonna get rid of them So we're gonna go to see my Pokemon because these are tutorial catches I don't count them for the Nuzlocke So the moment you start the Nuzlocke and get to the open world and can explore remove these three And if you wanted to release your Pokemon and go super hardcore and you don't want a graveyard You can release them from the pasture here But our second rule is like I said Whatever Pokemon you capture, you have to nickname. So our starter is a gift, and yes, we'll be using our starter. So you just have to go to your Pokemon and then go to change name, and then you want to give your starter any sort of nickname that you want, anything that you can build a bond with. Now, because there are no roots in Pokemon Legends Arceus, what we're going to be doing is whenever you see a name, the zone. So you start off in Aspiration Hill, and for example, Flora Gardens is right next door. So you know you're in the right area when you look at the map and you see yourself. Okay, here's a route. We're going to call these routes. And we're gonna. this is where you're going to be able to catch a single Pokemon. You're only allowed to catch one Pokemon per area. When you actually go to the area for the first time, it'll show up on the top left of your screen that, oh, we are entered a new zone, which means, okay, I can catch a new Pokemon. And because this game isn't a random encounter game, so you don't like run in the grass and see a Pokemon, Pokemon those obviously appear in front of you. Like, oh, there's a Shinx right here. Because of that, we're gonna have to be able just to catch a Pokemon we see. And you're gonna be able to pick because there really is no truthfully honest way for you to catch a Pokemon. If you see three Pokemon at the same time, then you see three Pokemon at the same time, and then you're just gonna have to pick one. So when you first uh, enter an area, you're just gonna have to catch one of the first Pokemon that you see in the area, and that will be your encounter for the area. You don't have to catch a Pokemon for every route if you don't want to. You can always save a route for later if you're interested in that. But for Nuzlocke's sakes, one Pokemon per route. Another massive change from this game versus other Pokemon games is that you can just straight up catch Pokemon without engaging them in battle. But after my two playthroughs of this game, I found that to be incredibly easy and such an easy way to gain EXP or for a party. Like you, in theory, only have to battle a few trainers and a few Pokemon in this entire game. So for this Nuzlocke rule, I'm going to make it so you are not allowed to just throw a Pokeball at any Pokemon. You actually just can't catch any Pokemon outside of battle. If you want to catch a Pokemon, you're going to have to engage it in battle first, lower it enough, and then catch it just like a typical Nuzlocke. And if the Pokemon runs away, that is your encounter. So like the Starlies in the beginning of the game, they're gonna run away. Well, they're gonna be out of luck. So, and this Badoof ran away, so I'm out of luck on this first route. So that is something to keep in mind and I will not be able to get a capture in Aspiration Hill in the beginning of the game. But to be fair, there are like 60 different named areas in the entire game. So missing one encounter is not gonna be a big deal and of course you can always use berries to lure pokemon out or hit them or stun them to make it easier for you to actually capture them and battle them when you are inside a battle and the last big massive change is alpha pokemon exists and what are we gonna do with alphas well i'm gonna say limit your alpha pokemon to one per entire area so this is city and field lands is the first area of the game you're gonna only be allowed to capture one 
alpha Pokemon. And like I said, you cannot capture Pokemon outside of battle. So you're going to have to do battle with them. This is going to be really risky. You're probably going to lose some Pokemon in the battle against them. So it's going to be high risk, high reward. They're super high level, but they can honestly wipe out your entire team. And now when we talk about getting wiped out, if your entire Pokemon team gets wiped out, your, your run is not over, but the six Pokemon that were knocked out must be released or put away in your death box. If you as a player get attacked, so let's say I get killed by this Rabidash here and I took some damage from that scream right there. If I get hit by a couple of this Rabidash's moves and I black out or let's say I fall off a cliff and die or if I drown, that is the end of my Nuzlocke challenge. And that's gonna be it. There's gonna be no redos. I think that's gonna be the best way to do it. And it's going to make you play on your toes and, you know, make it more fun of an experience and increase the stakes. And I'll say that includes of any knockout situation. So if you are fighting a noble Pokemon, you get knocked out from its attacks. That's going to be the end of your run as well. If you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, you can give yourself three lives. But in a hardcore version that I probably would run, I would just have one life and that's it. Even with those rules in place, I still think it's very easy to get over leveled. So you want to not be over leveled and you want to put yourself at a level cap. I suggest putting your level cap only two levels higher than the area's noble Pokemon. And I recommend checking out Cerebi for the exact numbers on this. But Cleaver is level 18, so you only have your party at level 20. Uh, Lilligant is level 30, so you only have a 32. Arcanine's at 36, go to 38. Electro's at 46, go to 48. And Avalog's at 56 and go to 58. After Avalog, you will be continuing the game until you defeat the champion. And if you beat the game, you know who I'm talking about. The champion is in post game. They have an incredibly hard team. So I recommend putting the cap on that at 70 or 72. That's going to be up to you. I'm personally going to probably just do it right at the boss level. So Cleaver for me would be 18 instead of 20. But hey, this is your Nuzlocke. You get to make the rules. And that's sort of the beauty of this is I'm giving you suggestions, but you can really make it into whatever you actually want it to be, which is pretty awesome. A last few things that I really like to run in my Nuzlocke is no duplicate Pokemons. So let's say I had an Eevee here, which I do. If I, ha if I saw another Eevee, I could not catch that Eevee at all. I already have one Eevee. If my Eevee got knocked out and I had to remove it, then I'm allowed to catch a different Eevee. So I like to have rules like that. So you can't really have more than one of the same species on your team. But as an example, if you have a Bidoof and a Barrel on your team, that will be okay. But you can never evolve that set that Bidoof into a Barrel because that will be your second Barrel, and you can only have one on your team. So just keep that in mind. I think that's cool to have a Species Clause so you just don't have like six incredibly overpowered Pokemon somehow in your playthrough. I also say no fast travel. You can use ride Pokemon, but I do think it takes away a lot from the experience. If you're constantly fast traveling across the map, I would only recommend fast traveling if you have to do it for some sort of story thing and you cannot actually get there. I don't know if there's a, that's even a thing in this game, but I just want to put that caveat just in case it is, but not that I can remember. I would ban all items in combat, like no healing, no status increasing items, just raw Pokemon. However, I do recommend giving your Pokemon grit items to level up their stats. I think that is fair because that's outside of battle. And changing their moves with the move tutor, that's okay. And using master seeds on them to give you some agile and strong style attacks for moves that your Pokemon does not does not naturally learn. I think that's perfectly fair, especially with these other rules, because I think it'll be a little bit too impossible to a degree. But I think this will make it very exciting and pretty fun overall. Lastly, of course, if you find a shiny Pokemon, you have to catch it. It doesn't matter if you already caught a Pokemon in that area. You get to catch the shiny Pokemon, and you must actually put on your team. If you get a shiny, it doesn't matter what level it is, you must put it on your team and use it because it is a shiny Pokemon. I will say this, you don't have to release a shiny Pokemon. Definitely keep it on, maybe trade it back to Pokemon Home later. But hey, if you're doing it on a live stream, it may be more fun to actually delete the shiny on stream. Well, guys, I hope you actually enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section below if one, if you are going to do a Nuzlocke and what kind of rules you would suggest. And two, do, would you want me to do a Nuzlocke on the channel? I can make a whole series out of it. Well, guys, I appreciate it. Definitely leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're trying to hit 7,000. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and have a great one.